Good day, this is going to be a tutorial, a first tutorial on setting up a new project and uh, creating walls, floor and showing you just roughly how the catalogues work and how to start placing cabinets. Um, this is going to be number one of a few that's going to be coming through in this uh, series and this is going to be done on the new look layout of the Promobi Professional so that you can see how it all works. So let's get started. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to go new design. I'm going to put in here, I'm going to use uh, mine over here. So it's going to search because I've already got one in. And I'm going to use this one here. It'll automatically put phone, phone number and email in. I'm going to say um, new. I'm going to say OK and what this does now is it's going to generate an A3 uh, or a 3D uh, floor plan as it generates for the new project. So it takes a little while because it's actually building it, getting it ready, organizing it. Right, here we go. So when it opens up in Promobi, this is how it opens up every time you start a new project. So it's always going to open up with what you can see here, which is two walls and a floor. Now, the first thing normally that I would do to get started is I would come across here. Now, because this is the newer version, um, you have to have a look and go through and work out what you want to do. So obviously we're gonna do walls and things like that. But the first thing I think that is gonna be important to do is when we go to tools, um, we're going to go to this feature configurator and the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything is choose the profile that I'm going to be using. This is very important. This is the structure behind how your cabinets are made and on this particular one, uh, how the back panel is going to be fitted. And also, am I using generic hardware or am I going to be using a specialized hardware like Bloom or Grass or a Tish or one of the others. Um, and with that, I can then preset what size my draw boxes will be to match the type of hardware that I'm going to use. So for this uh, particular instance that we're doing, I'm just going to use the standard that I've created for a 16 millimeter flat back. And what I mean by that is um, if I look at my cabinetry, I'm going to be putting it on a 150 kick plate, which is going to give me a cabinet height of 720 for my base units, and I'm using a depth of 560. So these are all things that have been preset ready to go. And if you go further down, if I look at things like cabinet assembly, it's going to give me things like where my, how my side panels are going to be going in. It's going to tell me how my back is fitted. So in this one, it's a three millimeter uh, back panel, which I've got uh, as a whole and then so on. I can go down and then I've also got things like um, drawers at the bottom here. I can actually have a look at what my gaps are going to be on my drawers, depending on what hardware I'm going to use or what runners I'm going to use will determine what size I put in over here and that allows us to determine the size of the draw box. So once I've chosen the one I've got and I've, I've created this already, I'm just going to say apply and I'm going to say OK. That basically allows me to know that uh, the structure that I'm going to use is going to be correct. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up, I'm going to go back to where it says edit, um, I can go back to file, so by moving along on these top things, I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to say save. And the reason I'm saving it without doing anything other than choosing the profile is because when I've created a new job, it hasn't saved anything yet. So by saving it at this point, Promobi already knows where to do the automatic backups and service, and it'll save on a regular basis for you. And also when you save now, it'll know where all the information needs to go. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back in, I'm going to go to where it says edit and you'll see I've got walls and things up here. I'm literally just going to right click on the wall. It's going to bring it up like this. I'm going to remove these walls. And for this segment, I'm going to remove all of them. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to build a structure, a room that I'm going to be doing my design in. So I'm going to 
double click on the floor. I want to just bring it up so I'm looking down on the floor now. Now for anyone who hasn't used Promobi, the mouse becomes a very important tool uh, when you're designing. So I recommend a mouse, uh, external mouse, it can be a wide mouse. Or With the mouse we have several functions available. Uh, and the, the best way to sort of describe it is with your scroll wheel on the mouse is your zoom button and we'll go through all this um, as we're doing our design but that will let us scroll. If I press the scroll button down it's going to give us a pan which is the hand tool and I can move and pan around. If I hold the scroll button and the right mouse button this gives me the option to tilt and move around. So by double clicking on it, it will just bring us back to the front, front face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to wall and I'm actually going to use edit wall. I prefer using this. I find it a lot easier and more accurate to, to the way that I build my walls. I'm going to open it. Now to explain what happens here is it's opened a new box with the structure ready to go. So on this editorial, we're going to build and draw our own walls as if we've been on site and taken some measurements. But there are some new things that you can do with inside uh, Promobi. We can actually come up here and if for instance with the floor plan, I'm just going to click on it, it'll open it up and what you can do with that is with the floor plan, if an architect has sent you a DXF file, you'll be able to open up his plan, it'll open up to scale, uh, it'll position it in this space and then you can actually trace over his walls and put all your measurements in exactly to what his drawing is. So that's a very fast and easy way if your architect has sent you a file like that. The other option is the one next to it, the floor plan image. With this, what you can do is if a client has sent you a JPEG or a TIFF or a PING file of the floor plan, you can import it using this and then what it'll do is when you bring the file in, you need to scale the file. So what it will ask you to do is select two points in the uh, plan. Let's say for instance you've got a wall and you know the wall is three meters long. You'll click on the one side, say the left side of the corner, and then you'll click on the right side of the wall. And then it will pop up and it will say what size is that wall and you'll type in three meters. Press OK and it scales that drawing for you up so you can then trace over the walls to do your floor plan. So those are a couple of options. Also what has uh, happened with the new update, the new look from OB, if a client has done a floor plan in SketchUp, you'll be able to actually import the SketchUp model uh, of his floor plan into Promobi and that will automatically draw the walls and leave spaces for doors and windows. So those are some of the options that are available. What we're going to do now is to make it a bit easier, we're going to pretend we've been on site We've done our measurements and now we want to actually draw what we've measured on site. So the best way to do that is if you come over to the right hand side, you're going to see over here we've got length, we've got angles, we've got the information that we need here, thickness of the wall, height of the ceiling, so depending on what height it is you can change it here. Orientation you're going to see right, now if I click on that you're going to see left is over here. We've got our right and we've got our center. I never use the center line because your measurements can then be adjusted depending on what thickness your wall is. So I tend to always use either right or left. If I use right it means I'm going to draw the layout in a clockwise direction. But occasionally you do need to go left if you haven't got a certain measurement that you're trying to match to and you need to run the opposite direction then you would choose left. So what I'm going to do is over here I'm actually going to click on the space and I'm going to drag and you'll see by dragging I already start building my wall but it's very difficult if you're going to try and drag to get your measurement exact and you'll see there I've got 4261 and so on. What you can do is where it says length at the top just click it so it highlights it. Come back into the drawing space, get your wall in the line position where you want it and at the top where it says length, you'll see at the moment it's 5821. I'm actually going to type in on my keyboard 6 meters, so 6,000. And on the keyboard, I press enter. It will stay highlighted blue, but what it's done is it's locked that measurement in for me on my drawing area. 
Now I'm going to move down and let's say for instance it's still highlighted in blue on that side. I'm going to line it up so it's nice and straight and I'm going to make that 3 meters. So I'm going to type in 3 meters on my keyboard and I'm going to press enter. So 3000 in millimeters is 3 meters. I'm going to press enter and you'll see that it has actually locked that position. Now within Promovi I can actually stop right here where we are now. I can actually continue um, but by stopping it at this position I can carry on working, I can add cabinets, I can do whatever I want. I don't have to close the room off but we are going to continue, we're going to put some more walls in and we're going to close the room. So now I want to come across and you'll see I've made it nice and level. The top right hand corner where it says length is still highlighted blue which means I can just type my measurement in. So I'm going to make this two meters like that and press enter on my keyboard, not on my mouse, on the keyboard. It locks it in and keeps it highlighted so it makes it a lot easier and a lot faster. So I'm going to come down here. Now the option that I've got is I can obviously type in a measurement but if I'm working to this floor size that I've got here just by dragging it down you'll see that it will snap to where that floor size is because I've already got a floor size there and it's at two meters. I'm not going to use two meters, I want to use three meters. I'm press enter, it's going to bring it down and now by dragging it across I can come here, I can level everything up and I've got an option now. I can either press enter on the keyboard because it's going to be four meters anyway because I'm going to join it to the top or I can press the mouse button but I'm going to use the enter again, keep it going and I'm going to move all the way up and I'm going to join the two together that so keep it nice and straight join the two together and press enter once you've entered it press your right um, button on your mouse it closes it up it finishes it off get to say okay at the bottom and you'll see if I zoom out my room is made up Now what I can do is, if for instance I'm not happy with maybe this join or how it's uh, the wall or I see there's a problem, I can literally just go back to here and I can say edit walls or you can also right click on the wall and you can go down and say edit walls again and it'll bring this drawing back up and what I want to do now is I want to click on my move tool which is this little arrow, my select and move tool, I'm going to click on this uh, mouse or wall here and I just want to see I see it's not actually fully joined up and what I can do now is I can click on these nodes and I can snap them together to make sure that it's joined up okay so I begin to say okay and I'm happy now I can see it's all nicely done now the problem that I've got is my floor is not set up correctly for the walls that I'm going to be working on so I've got a couple of options that I've got here. I can come across over here and I can say adjust floor. And if I say adjust floor, if it's a relatively simple layout like this, where we've just got a little bit of a corner cut out or something like that, the floor will automatically adjust to the walls that you've created. But let's say for argument's sake, I'm going to undo. Let's say for argument's sake it's a more complicated floor and you need to adjust the floor yourself. The way to do that is you're going to right click on the floor with your mouse. You can come down and you can say edit down here. And it's going to bring up a window similar to what we did with the walls. This one you use for your um, worktops and there's, there's a lot of options that you've got within this. So what I can do is I can zoom out with my mouse. And you'll see that I've got these uh, little squares on the side here. I can click on those and I can drag them to fill the space that I want. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to fill this room. And it does snap to, to the lines to make it easier. And what I'm going to do here is if I come down here and I snap, obviously if I go in now, I'm going to have my floor is going to fill this space as well. I don't want that. I need the floor to be the shape of the room. So how do I get around that? I can come up here to where there is a plus and add a vertex and click on that or a node depending on if you're coming from SketchUp or from AutoCAD and I'm just going to add a node and I'm going to add another node here. It doesn't really matter exactly where I place them. Come back to your select and move tool 
And now what I can do is with this node, I can actually position it onto that line. I'm going to do the same with this one, pull it up, and I'm going to snap it over there. This one, I'm going to move across and put it over there. Now I've created my own floor shape from an existing file. Just so that you're aware, these little uh, round circles, if you click or dots, you can actually pull them out. You can make different shapes and things like that. That comes in a little bit more handy when you've got to do a particular shape or you're doing a worktop and you want to do a rounded eating area or you want to make a custom shaped uh, worktop. You can use things like that as well. So I'm happy with the floor. We're going to say OK. And now what's happened is with my mouse, I'm just going to move so that you can see we're in our 3D mode now of the walls. So our walls are built. Yes, all done, all perfect. Now, if I want to do add some doors and windows and things like that, we'll do that in a minute. But what I wanted to show you is, let's say for instance, you're working on a um, like a galley style kitchen or something like that, or you want to work on that wall, but this wall's going to get in the way. It doesn't matter what you've got attached to that wall. So if I've put cupboards on that wall or anything like that, by lowering that wall, it hides everything. So it makes it a lot easier to work with. So what I mean by that is if I right click on the wall, I can just say lower and that wall will lower. And now I can actually work without that wall interfering with where I'm positioning the view and also when I start putting cabinets in. The other thing that you can do inside the Mobi, if I'm looking over on this side over here, like this, and I want to work on this wall, what I can do is if I double click on that wall, it'll take me to that wall. So if I zoom out a little bit and I say I want to work on uh, this wall over here and I'm working and I want to go to this wall, I can double click on it, it'll automatically move me to that wall. So it makes it very quick. While we're on the walls, You'll see on the side, uh, on the left hand side there of the wall, A, the walls turn purple, which means that's my active wall, that's the wall I'm working with. But you'll see that there are measurements up the side of the wall. These are the measurements that you've set, and I'll explain that more now, where you're going to place your cabinetry. So when you bring your cabinetry in, for instance, and it's going to be on a 150 kick plate, it's going to come down and it's going to snap to the 150 line. Then I've got an 820, I've got a 1470, which could be for my base of my wall units, and so on. Now I can adjust these and manually change them to whatever my settings are gonna be. So if you are working on a kitchen and you work on a 100 mm kick plate, you're gonna go, well, this doesn't help me because it's gonna always snap to 150. It's fine. What you can do is if you right click on the wall itself and you come down to where it says rulers, You've got a whole load you can choose from already that have been preset, but you can also go in and edit your rulers. So you can change whatever height you want. So if I want that to be 870, where that is, I can literally come in and I can say 870. Okay. And if I save that, it'll automatically remember now that on that group there, it's going to be 870, so it'll change over here. You can even put text in, so you could say kick plate, you could do whatever you want. I just find that it gets a little bit complicated to get too much text over. So once you know what your sizes are, you could actually stay just using it like this. So by doing that and I say close, you'll see it's changed now to 870. Okay. So that's something else, the way that Promobi works. So that you're aware. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna click on this wall because this is the wall that I want to work with. I'm going to come up a little bit so you can see how the room looks. And what I want to do now is I'm going to show you how the catalogs work inside Promobi. So with the new look of Promobi, they've moved, they've changed. So on this side, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, I tend to find it it's a little bit big. I prefer it a little bit smaller. So in the past, uh, Promobi used to have all the catalogs along the bottom here and you used to have to drop down and do your menus. What they've done is they've now created it to the side, so on the left-hand side. So if I go to where it says catalog and I hover over catalog, it'll bring up my catalogs. If I move away, it'll hide the catalog. But because I'm going to be adding several things from the catalog, I don't want it to keep hiding. 
So what I can do is I can come across to catalog, I can come here and I can pin it, which means it's going to leave it there for me all the time. I can now man manually move this in a little bit so that it's not using up as much of my workspace. Now once I've got this, you'll see that all my cabinets and things are already here. But what we want to start with uh, in this particular uh, training session is I want to put some windows and doors in. Now where do I find my windows and doors? So windows and doors fall in under the cat uh, categories. Now if I come down here and you'll see that we've got a lot of categories inside here. So if I come down here, I'm going to go to a, a file called Decor. That's a folder. And with inside that folder, there's going to be multiple folders. Where it says accessible, if I come down here, you're going to see I've got multiple catalogs with inside the decor catalog. Now, each catalog in Promobi has several layers of catalogs. So even for your cabinetry, you'll have different layers depending on what you're going to do. And we'll show you that when we get closer to the cabinetry. So what I want to do is I want to put some doors and windows in. So I come down here and it will say doors and windows. Click on it. And what it's going to do, it's going to open up your doors and windows and it's going to say all, meaning that it will give you every single door and window that's available. Okay. So if you're going to be using just door, for instance, you could click on this down arrow and you can just say doors. And now it's going to bring in just the door section. If I come in lower over here, I can then change it as well. I can come in and I can say I want garage doors or so on. Okay. So at the moment we're going to be using doors and it's on all. And I can come down here and it can give me different types. I can do blindfold doors, frame doors, sliding doors, side hung doors. So let's do side hung doors. And there's all our side hung doors sitting in here that we can use. Now the advantage of this is all our doors can still be manipulated to size, height, width, uh, with inside Promobi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use a size, let's have a look here, let's use this one, interior door. And I'm just going to click on it with my um, left mouse button, keep it held and bring it in. And I'm going to place it on the wall that I want it to be on. So I'm going to come down here, I want it on that wall and I'm going to let go. Now, the decor catalog is actually online, so it takes a little bit longer to bring in, but over time it actually learns what you use a lot of, and it remembers those to make it faster. So when you're bringing in a new, new um, product from decor, the first few times you do it, it might take a few seconds for it to come in. Anyway, there's our door. So what I can do is if I click on the door, it's going to give me some relevant information. So I'm going to see that I'm 420 from that side, I'm 1705 from that side, and I've got a 600 height to the top of my ceiling. That's great. Across on this side, on the right hand side, where it says dimensions, these are the dimensions of the door. So if I need to change any of these dimensions for this door, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make this one 900. And it's going to change my door to 900. And I want the height of my door to be 2.1. Going to change my door, it's gone to 500, and there's my door sitting there. Now that's great, but the problem that I've got is if I need this door centered, I can right click on it and I can come down and I can say center, and it's going to center the door so it'll be exactly in between the middle of the two, two walls. Or what I can do is as well, um, I can look at this and I can go, okay, uh, I actually need 600 or maybe 610 from this side because I'm going to have cabinets along this wall. So the way to do that is if you come down here, you'll see where it says positioning. It gives me the position where it is at the moment. So I've got 550, there's 550. So what I can do is on the uh, right hand side where it says 550, I'm going to make that 620. And you'll see that it's automatically moved the door to 620. It's adjusted all my measurements for the door. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to still have the door highlighted. I'm just going to come up here on the uh, right hand side, I'm going to say open. I'm going to open that door. There we go. Now the problem that I've got with this is the door is opening the wrong direction. I want it to open the opposite direction. How do we do that? It didn't give us any options here for a left or right door. It doesn't give us an option here to change it 
left to right. Doesn't matter, what you do is you right click on the door and you say mirror down here. This also works the same with your one door cabinets. If you want a door cabinet to open one way or the other, you'll use the mirror function. Rather than designing hundreds of 3D models, one left, one right, they've designed it so that there's one model and you're able to actually just mirror that cabinet to give you the door direction that you're going to need. So if I say mirror, you'll see that the door now is going to open in the other direction. Go back to properties, there's our door, it's all preset. So we're ready, that's great. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in a window. Works exactly the same principle. So up here where I've got my doors and windows, I'm just going to click here, I'm going to come back down to windows, I'm going to allow it to open up, and again I've got a another section of all the different types of windows that I can have and openings and sliding windows and all the different ones. I'm just going to leave it on a wall and I'm just going to take a standard sli uh, sliding window like this and I'm just again with my left button clicked on the uh, mouse hovering over that window I can now bring that window across and I can bring it in. Don't worry that it's going to clash with anything we're going to change the size once it's brought in. So again, what we can do is we can click on the window. Under our properties dimensions down here, you're going to see dimensions, and here's the dimensions of that window. So what I want to do is I only want that window to be 1200. Okay, and I want it to be a meter. Okay, the depth of the window I'm going to make 150 because that's the thickness of our walls. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I want to move this window just past the door just so that it's in the right place. Now I can literally just drag it and move it so that it lines up with the window like that and the door which is fine. Now you'll see that by doing that I've got the zero there and I've got 280 here um, and I've also got a height here of 1 meter 100 to the bottom edge of the windowsill. So I know from the floor what height I've got here. Now, let's say for instance, I want this window to be centered. Again, I can do exactly the same thing. I can do it from right clicking, or I can do it up here where it says center. And it will center 140, 140 into the window for me. Now, if I need to change the height of this, there's two ways of doing it. I can come down again the same in position, and you'll see lower dimension is 1100, and I can change it there. Or I can just come to my Z axis, which is here, which is where you're gonna check when you put your cabinets in that it's sitting at your 150. So what I'm gonna do with this one is, I actually want this window to be at a meter high off the floor. There we go. So very simple, very easy to actually put in your windows and doors. Once it's done, you'll see that it's all built for us, all ready to go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you a little trick. I want to change the color of this door and I want to put a floor in. Now, how do I do that? So before I even start doing my cupboards, let's put some tiles on the floor and let's change that color of that door. So what I can do is I can come up over here where it says materials, which is next to my models. And I can come in and I can choose from a range of materials. Okay. So I've got lots of different options. So let's just say I go to wood and I want to make this door a wood color. Let's say I want to use this one. Um, I can bring this in and I can drop it on the door. Say yes. And you'll see that my door has changed. But what I want to do is I want the outer part of the door also done. So with this little paintbrush, I can click on the outer part of the door and it'll do that for me as well. Now just remember, now that I've got the paintbrush, just be careful where you click now, because anything that you click will change to this color. So it does become a little bit of an issue. So the way to get around that is, you have to come back up here and you just click on this little move tool. And now whatever you click on, it's not going to affect you at all. Okay, so it moves quite quickly. Now what I want to do is I want to put a nice tile on the floor. 
So what I can do is I can go to where it says wood, I can come down here and now I can have a look, what have we got, walls and floor, have we got some here, we've got some nice tiles, and again I've got different types of tiles and different things that I can use. And I'm just going to use the standard tile, and let's put this tile, again just drag it onto the floor and let go. And what has happened now is I've got my tile set up on the floor ready to go. Now there's a lot more that we can go into. You can change materials of the tile. You can come up to this section here. We can come in, we can change the size of the tile. We can change the rotation of the tile if you want it a particular way. We can even customize. This is a highly polished tile. I can come in here and I can change it. Maybe I don't want it a high gloss. I maybe just want it as a satin or maybe a semi-gloss. So let's click on that. Say apply and it'll apply to that material has now got a semi-gloss so when I go to do my renders later on I know what the finish is and I can change that to any material that I've got with inside the promotive uh, area. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to models and where it says decor I'm going to come down and move up a little bit and see okay and I want to go to kitchens. Okay. So under kitchens this is where we're going to find our cupboards and this is where we're going to start to put some cupboards in. So I'm going to do very basic ones for now to get it going for this particular tutorial. And then what we'll do is on the next tutorial we'll get into more depth. So I'm just going to put one or two cupboards in just to show how it works. And to give you an idea of how you do your placement of cabinets. So again what's going to happen is um, if you're clicking on kitchen and I want to just go to the normal cabinets. I click on a wall and I turn it uh, purple, that's the wall that my cabinets are going to attach to. So if I'm going to come under here and I want to put some cabinets in, now the first thing I know is I want to put a corner unit in. Now this is very important to show you. If I come over here and I say I'm going to put a left 950 in, and I take that and I go to put it in, you'll see that it gives me an outline of what my cabinet is. And now I want to place the cabinet and I let go. What's going to happen is my cabinet is now sitting in the wrong direction. It needs to go from this wall to that wall. Now, yes, I can actually go in under models. I can come in over here. I can go to move tool and I can rotate it and do all that. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's a pain to do that. You don't need to. There's a much quicker way. So if we just remove that cupboard, the way that the corner units are done, it's how it's positioned. So if I click on this wall, that wall has become purple. You'll see it's already giving me an outline. If I bring my corner unit in now and attach it to this wall, you'll see that the orientation of the cupboard is in the right direction. It's also snapped it, if I look over here under my Z, at 150. So I know that that cupboard is set up correctly. But I don't want a 950 cupboard here. I want this to be, let's make it an, um, let's make it an 850. Uh, maybe an 850 okay and we're going to click there and we're going to click on this one and make that 850 and now we've got an 850 corner unit sitting in there okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in another cupboard just for in here but obviously we don't want a corner unit so what i'm going to do is on my base cabinets i'm just going to go down to my cabinets and i could look here and i could bring in for instance an 800 and the 800 is going to be miles too big for that space, which is fine, it's not a problem. I come over here and I can just make that say 600, and we can see 600 will fit. So what I've done now is I've got my two cupboards, and I've got my other cupboard in it, and I've got about 30 millimeters, will tell me down here, dimension 30. I've got a 30 mil gap here, so that's fine, so I can put a side panel in. Okay. So I've now got my cabinets in, and again, with your cabinets, if they're selected, you can open the doors and see what, how, they, how they're going to work. You can open the doors and can show you the swing. Okay. So what we're going to do now, while we're in this position, I want to bring in a side panel. Now to bring in a side panel, you would think you would have to just attach it to the cupboard. It doesn't quite work that way. It has to be registered to something. So if I go to do um, side cabinets, and let's go down to, let's 
Let's have a look here. If I want to bring in fillers, right side filler, I could use one of those. Um, we could use diagonal wall ends. I don't think we need to be, put any of these types of things in, not into that area. So let's use wall fillers. I'm going to use a side panel and literally I'm, instead of attaching it to the cupboard like that because if I do that and I'll show you it attaches the side of the panel to the cupboard that way we don't want it that way so what we can do is we can undo what we're going to do is we're going to bring this in and we want to attach it to the wall once it's attached to the wall I can then slide it down next to the unit once it's next to the unit, I can now change the size of this. So the height is going to be 870. And I want it to be 600. There's my side panel. Okay. So again, I can do the same thing on this side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wall, right click, and I'm going to lower it. So that when I move around, I can actually see what I've got on this wall and I can see that I've got a 1150 uh, area to put in there so again I can just go back to my cabinets and I'm going to go to cabinets and let's put in I put a thousand in with an edge we could do that so again I can drop down here and I can choose a thousand or I could just put in whatever I've got. So let's put another 800 in there. And I'm going to butt it up and it will snap to my 150. I just glance here to make sure it is 150, which it is. And I see I've got a uh, 350 mil to the edge. I don't want to go all the way to the edge because I want to put a nice side panel. Or what I could do is I could put a cupboard in that's going to go past that. And then I could build cupboards down the other wall. So we could have a look at doing that. So what I could do in theory I could bring this cupboard out, uh, so let's put in another 800, and I've got 450 out, which is fine. The difference is, if I put a cupboard in here now, on this wall, and I click here, and I'll show you, let's just say I'm going to put another 800 in, and I'm going to butt it up, I'm going to have an issue here because I don't want to be able to see this funny corner edge even if I'm going to put a worktop on. So what I would need to do here is I would need to extend this cupboard out. About 110 by the looks of it. About 110. So what I can do is I can come back to my properties. I can come back and I can click here and down here I can just type in plus 110. No. Now that I've got it at 110, what I want to do is I want to add a side panel here so that it finishes it off so from this side you're not really going to see um, the cupboard door or you're going to see this side panel here. We want to close this off. So again what I can do is I can click on this, I can then say copy and if I put it down here what will happen is I can paste it onto the floor. So now with this on the floor, I can get hold of it and I can move it and just bring it in. Like that. Okay. What I would normally do with this one is I'd obviously put a little bit of a filler in here. So what I would do is, is probably move this one back slightly and I'd put a small filler in. And by doing a filler, I can then do This. and then what I can do with that filler is I can give it the size that I want so that filler is at 300 I only need that to be 20 and now I can just butt that up and I've got everything done ready to go okay once you've got to this sort of point and you're ready to continue with the next things where we're going to show you how to put kick plates in, how to build some more wall units and things like that and then change colors and, and so on. Um, just remember to save every so often. So even though it's got an auto save, it doesn't hurt 
for you to uh, press save every now and then. So to press save, you go back to file at the top here and you just press save. It'll pop up and it'll save the project for you. That project is now saved. We can continue working or finish off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off now and then we'll follow this up with tutorial two where we'll get into more depth on the cupboards and things like that and how you can move things and change things around. So I hope this uh, first tutorial helps you get started on how the program works.